Welcome to worship at our Savior's as we continue to celebrate the season of Easter. We invite you to speak the words of our call to worship with us. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. We have not seen the risen Christ. But we see him in the lives of those transformed by grace. We have not seen Jesus face to face. But we see him in the faces of our neighbors. We have not touched the wounds of Jesus. But we are called to bring healing to people and places that are wounded. Open our eyes of faith, O oh God. And help us to see glimpses of resurrection life all around us. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Welcome again to worship at our Savior's. What a joy it was to celebrate Easter last Sunday. Thanks to everyone who helped make Holy Week and Easter meaningful and memorable. All of our staff, volunteers, musicians, worship leaders, our tech teams, altar care members, Ushers and greeters, setup teams, takedown teams, everyone who donated lilies, everyone who worshiped in person and online, thanks be to God. While the church calendar is now a little less busy, there's still a lot going on. Baptisms and First Communion, confirmation, education, service, and fellowship opportunities. Please check out our website often to see everything that is happening in and around the church to see how you can get connected and to support the ministries of our saviors in whatever ways you're able to do so. Unfortunately, our scheduled preacher for this week is sick today, 
so you won't be hearing a sermon, but that actually provides you with a unique opportunity. Instead of a sermon, I'm going to give you a few questions to think about while you hear our gospel and listen to Duncan's musical offering. You might want to write these down so that you can carry these thoughts with you throughout the week. First, this story that we're going to hear is often referred to as Doubting Thomas. But is that really the best title? I would argue that perhaps Thomas could be referred to as Believing Thomas. Because at the end of the gospel, Thomas believes with all his heart. Here's another question. Has anyone ever told you something that sounded too good to be true? What did it take for you to eventually believe? And here's a third question. Why wasn't Thomas there when Jesus appeared? We'll hear that all of the other disciples were locked in the room because they were afraid. It seems like Thomas was out and about. Maybe he should be referred to as brave Thomas. And one last question to reflect upon. We'll hear in our gospel today, not once, not twice, but three times, Jesus say these words, peace be with you. Why do you think Jesus needed to repeat those words so many times? Did the disciples not hear him the first time? If Jesus appeared to us today, would he speak those same words? We all could use a little peace, am I right? Hear now our gospel and a musical reflection. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked because they were afraid, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them, and he said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, and for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. What will be left when I've drawn my last breath Beside the folks I've met and the folks who know me Will I discover a soul-saving love or just the dirt above and below me? I'm a doubting time. 
promise I took a promise I do not feel safe Oh me of a little faith Sometimes I pray for a slap in the face Then I beg to be spared cause I'm a coward If there's a master of death I bet he's holding his breath As I show the blind and tell the deaf about his power I'm a doubting Thomas Keep my promises Cause I don't know what's safe Oh, me of a little faith Can I be used to help others find truth when I'm scared to find proof that it's a lie Can I be led down a trail dropping breadcrumbs That proves I'm not ready to die Please give me time to decipher the signs And please forgive me for the time I'm a doubting Thomas I'll take your promise Cause I don't know what to say Oh me of a little faith Oh me of a little faith Jesus encourages Thomas and the rest of the disciples to believe. Almost every time that we gather to worship, we declare what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those indeed of good news. Your church cries out, O God, and you listen. As you drew near to the disciples, draw near to us this day. Breathe on us your Holy Spirit, that our faith is renewed and our doubts cast aside, and that we give witness to your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your creation cries out, O God, and you listen. Nurture trees, crops, wildflowers, and all growing things. Guide farmers, gardeners, arborists, and others who tend the soil and nurture plants into life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your world cries out, O oh God, and you listen. Guide police, firefighters, paramedics, and all first responders to work for the well-being of communities and the dignity of every soul that no one would need to live in fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your children cry out, O God, and you listen. Hear your people crying out for justice, for an end to racism and oppression in all forms, for a world where war is a distant memory and all are fed and safe. We remember our neighbors in Rockford, Illinois, in the Ukraine, 
Russia, Israel, Palestine, Taiwan, and Sudan. We pray for all of those who cry out in suffering or pain from illness in mind, body, or spirit. And we recall their names in the silence of our hearts at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your church cries out, O God, and you listen. Renew pastors, deacons, musicians, staff, administrators, volunteers who facilitated Holy Week and Easter worship. Open our hearts to discern where God calls each of us to serve with our hands in your call. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accept our gratitude, O God, for the lives of those who now rest in you. We remember those who are mourning, those who are celebrating legacies remaining, and those who have now entered into your nearer presence. Grant us your peace amid our fears. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray. We trust in your abiding love as we pray the prayer that Jesus teaches us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. There's a wonderful prayer in our hymnal that fits perfectly with this day as we remember Thomas as we talk about following Jesus when we can see and when we cannot see. Let us pray. O God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Make Christ known. Thanks be to God. side with gracious words draw near O Christ who spoke as none ever spoke my peace be with you here we may not touch your hands and side nor follow where you trod but in your promise we rejoice and cry my Lord and God, help then, O oh Lord, our unbelief, and may our faith abound to call on you when you are near and seek where you are found. For you, O oh resurrected Lord, are found in And when our life of faith is done in realms of clearer light, may we behold you as you are with full and tender.